one thing we haven't done so far in our real world VBA task is actually put buttons into the spreadsheet so the user can access these macros. So let's do that in this video. Let's create more of a sense of an interface, something user friendly that the user is going to want to interact with to get these powerful macros working. So let's go back to the worksheet and we're going to put some buttons in here. So let's go to the developer tab and then insert and then just click on the top left button uh, for our button form control there. Okay, buttons. So people who've been with me for a while on the channel is it's one of my pet hates really when buttons are not nicely lined up in spreadsheets. So let's take the time now to make it look good for the user. Hold down the Alt key, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then click the left button and hold it. And you can see the shape of the button is snapping to the cell there and then release the button. And Excel is asking us which macro do we want to run? Now, what's the first macro we want to run? Remember, we now have a modular approach. So we've got multiple macros in there, two at the moment. Validate files is the first macro that we're looking to run. And we can see we've now got our button there. What are we going to do uh, with the text on the button? We want that to say something informative. So let's go ahead and say uh, validate files. So when we click that button now, we're going to go to this validate files routine. So let's check that. Um, let's go to the VBA editor here. And then, yes, if everything's OK, we should get down to this uh, piece of code here. Uh, but just to be sure, let's put a message box at the top, right at the top of the routine. And let's just say uh, you are in, are in the validate routine. OK, it may seem like kind of an unnecessary step, but I always take it step by step testing at each stage. That's how you keep the stress levels down and that's how you have good, long, productive programming sessions. So hit validate files and we can see, yet yeah, we've got a message box there. Then we're expecting to go to the other routine because remember at the bottom of the routine, we call the other routine and now we've got another message box there. Uh, so I'm happy with that. OK, and let's remove this message box. And then, OK, this is looking uh, pretty good here. Good. OK, so I'm wondering about the interaction between these routines. So would we want one routine to lead on to the other routine? So an approach I've had some success with is we're going to go for a slightly different approach here because I think it's worth demonstrating. It's not something I've done on the channel before. So we're not going to go on to the next routine here. So I've just put an inverted comma next to this line of code. So we're not going to run that line of code. Rather than doing that, let's introduce this kind of modular feel to the interface so that the user can click through multiple buttons, at least two buttons, in order to get this uh, task done. So I'm now going to right click on this button, hold down the control key, hold down the control key, click and hold. That's going to create another button for us that's identical. You can see the text is the same. Holding down the Alt key. Yes, we want these buttons properly aligned. Otherwise, I'm going to get very frustrated. There we go. And then right click on this one. And what's this button going to do? Well, this button is going to analyze the files. A weekly live Excel VBA tutorial with Chris and a small group of learners. On your computer, click join below this video for more. So we're going to say analyze here. Analyze the files. OK, and what macro is going to run? Let's right click on the button. Then the macro we want to run here is um, analyze files. So there we go. And then we can click on analyze files. Now, now what's going to happen? OK, we're in the we're, we're in the analyze files routine. OK, there we go. So we've now got this kind of modular feel on on the user interface got two buttons here so the user can click validate files and then click analyze files so what we need now at the end of the validate files routine is some information to let the user know that the files that the files rather have been validated so let's put a message box in here and let's say in fact i'm going to use this existing conditional statement and then we're going to put a message box in here then let's just say message box in fact, we're going to uh, do a more involved conditional statement here, if that's the right word, uh, a longer conditional statement, because we're going to do something else as well. And let's say message box, um, OK, uh, let's say files OK. Files OK, you can now analyze files. OK, an informative name. Well, so, some good information there for the user. And then let's say 
uh, OK. OK at the top there. Good. So what we're expecting now, if we click validate files, then we should get this message box saying the files are OK. You can now analyze files. So we're going to hit validate files here and we've got this nice uh, little message box. So again, this might seem like very step by step, almost ponderous. We're doing something, something else, something else, something else. But I found if you cut cut things down in a mod modular way, step by step, it builds user confidence, builds user confidence in the application builds user confidence in you as a programmer. Remember on Tiger, we're talking about creating files for your average Excel user to use. If you were doing this yourself, maybe you don't Maybe you don't need all these buttons, but I work for people and, and create files for them to use. That's why this step-by-step -step modular approach can be really helpful. So uh, back to the routine here. Something else I'll put in at this stage is let the customer know when the files were last validated. A weekly live Excel VBA tutorial with Chris and a small group of learners. On your computer, click join below this video for more. So what's the, this range? C6. Okay. So range C6 dot value equals. Um, so we're going to say last validated here. And then the and sign. And then we want to say we just want to put the date and the time in there. Now, I'm not absolutely sure if this is going to work, but this is in the spirit of what we do on the channel. You know, sometimes it doesn't work and we work through it. Uh, but I want now this now construct that gives us the date and the time now and then the format. Well, let's have uh, the day. In fact, let's mm, let's keep it simple. Let's just have the time. So let's have hour, hour, minute, minute, uh, second, second. OK, and then you can expand this, build on this if you want to put the, the date in there as well. So this is exactly what I would do on customer files. Let's save the file control S. Let's hit the F5 key. Files OK, you can now analyze files and we can see we've now got a message in here, which is the current time, uh, 1030, 10.39. So this just helps the customer, you know, understand when the files were last validated. And it's just an extra piece of information. You know, this stage has run this stage is okay so it's good communication with the user going to build confidence uh, in what you're doing and in this modular approach so in in the next video we're going to get get into this analyze files routine what are we going to have to do we're going to have to look at the, look at the two files dynamically find the ranges to work with we're going to really get stuck into this analysis process i'll see you in the next video